Oh, hey Builder Vlog. I've got some crazy news. I'm moving. Yeah. Um, Diane and I have built two new sheds on our property and we're actually going to uh, build up the garage and move out of our shop here in Moraga. So uh, we're going to have some guest hosts for a couple episodes and we're going to start doing a guest episode and then a main Scorpios build episode uh, one after another for the next couple months. So we're turning it over this week to our editor-in-chief, Andy Sorrow, who's doing the top five designs you have not yet seen in the battle box. So let's kick it over to Andy and get this episode started. The first set of robots we'll be highlighting are True Fall Body Spinners, Why Pout, Why Not, Triton, Cyclone Bot, and Project Liftoff. These robots have existed in the sport for quite some time, dating all the way back to the Comedy Central era of BattleBot days. Rather than typical full-body shell spinners we know of, such as Gigabyte and Captain Shredderator, these robots seek to spin the entire body of their robot using wheel contact to the ground of their outside spinning mass and move around the battle box using novel drive methods. Team Wyachi's older triangular-shaped robots, Why Pout and Why Not, did so by integrating a tiny robot called a Navbot to navigate the large outside spinning mass around the arena slowly. Another robot to have done this is the similar-looking Triton, which completely skirted the rule sets at the time by having a servo in the center with a peg leg to limp its way around the box. Then, when it was ready attack... It would lift the leg inside, spin up, and hockey puck its way around the arena, colliding into walls, its opponents, and anything in between. There are also what are known as melty drive robots, such as Cyclone Bot and the very successful Beetleweight Project Liftoff, which utilize an onboard computer system to pulse drive the wheels at different tempos and gradually glide their robot across the arena by changing momentum. There's yet to be a melty drive or full body spinning robot to enter into the BattleBots arena, not just due to the difficulty it is to program such a drive system, but because it skirts the fine line of weapon weight allowance per the BattleBots rule set. However, the producers, Trey and Greg, have acknowledged that they may be flexible with the rule set, so long as the robot remains mobile and actively attacking. Our second set of robots we'll be highlighting are Launchpad McWack and No Fly Zone. These two robots are some of the only of their kind and one of the most imaginative designs to ever enter any robot combat arena, courtesy of the team of a House of Sin. Imagine a paper towel roll tube with only one wheel sticking out of one side of the robot and a large propeller sticking outside the other side, propping the propeller off the ground with support beams. The robot's propeller blade acts as a weapon, spinning at vicious speeds and propelling the robot forward towards its opponent, while the rear tire is used to steer this robot around the battle box. This robot has been massively successful in the smaller bot divisions, and is one of the most menacing robots out there as it packs all of its weight into the weapon system with a minimal drivetrain. Another benefit is that the blade covers the entire front side of the robot and makes it both very difficult to engage head-on and even more difficult to control or push around the arena so long as the blade remains spinning. Despite its success, this robot has not been scaled up to the 250-pound division at all, due in part to being both a frightening idea to ever want to test such a monstrous machine as well as there possibly being concerns of its effectiveness when scaled up in weight, with the unknown of how well it could even move around the arena with its air propulsion driving system. Our next robot is Thagomizer. One of the best kept secret success stories in the robot combat world is that of Thagomizer. Thagomizer is a word that describes the spiked tail of a stegosaurus dinosaur, which it uses to whip around its body to attack. Similarly, Thagomizer the Antweight combines the power of both the Thwackbots and horizontal spinners to deliver one of the most potent and powerful attacks ever seen in the sport. With an incredibly narrow and lengthy design, Thagomizer generates a ton of centrifugal force, 
by spinning in its place, which amplifies the momentum and feed rate of its horizontal spinning disc on its tail, striking exceptionally hard on its opponents. Also of note is that this design has been very good at countering many of the vertical spinners in the weight class, as its long reach allows Thagomizer to strike its opponents long before their weapon can come into play. Considering that BattleBots is currently dominated by vertical spinners in the weight class, a 250 pound version of Thagomizer may just be the perfect counter to the current BattleBots metagame. If you'd like to learn more about Thagomizer, please check their YouTube channel, Team Thagomizer, which not only has fight videos, but a detailed description as to how their weapon system physics work. Another robot we have yet to see scale up to the 250 pound weight division is Droopy. Tommy Wong has been dominating the beetle weight division with his massively successful take on the gyroscopic precession drive system and his dual horizontal spinner robot, Droopy. Droopy's two helicopter blades spin in tandem and act as a novel drive system. Droopy has no wheels but rather sits on low friction skis and utilizes the startup torque of the blades, pulsing their speed to generate momentum to move in any given direction. This unique weapon system also allows Droopy to invest most of its weight into its weapon only, which also acts as a sort of active armor by covering all angles of the robot. While Droopy will never win in a pushing battle, it will almost always be the robot with the most powerful weapon in the arena at any given time. While we have seen gyroscopic precession be utilized in the battle box with vertical spinner Rex, we have yet to see it be utilized as a horizontal spinner. A 250 pound version of Droopy would also be a menace to the many vertical spinners in the weight class, as its weapon system reach allows it to make contact with its opponents long before they can ever reach the soft, gooey center of Droopy. Plus, look at that face. Isn't Droopy adorable? So, Builder Blog, what do you think so far? Are these not crazy robots you would love to see 250-pound versions of? I know I would. Please leave a comment on what robot you think we missed that should have been on this list. I'd love to see your recommendations. Our final selection for robots to be scaled up to the battle box is Dutch Oven. Last but not least is recent NHRL All-Stars Beetleweight Tournament winner, Dutch Oven. And yes, you might be thinking we have seen many a flamethrower robot in the battle box before, from gruff to complete control, but what's most interesting is the custom-made novel flamethrower system utilized by BattleBots champion Alex Grant and Team Seems Reasonable Robotics. This robot doesn't just utilize a butane system, but an entire custom-built housing with a fan propulsion system to pump out massive flames, as well as concentrated high-temperature flames after he's grabbed his opponent. But enough of my tiny brain description, I'll let Alex describe it for you in detail. What goes in the 8-ounce can of butane is now in this uh, custom aluminum housing. The 3D printed aluminum tank over here, there's a little straw that comes over here, and then through the solenoid valve, the fuel wraps around like a rocket engine, so it cools the chamber as the fuel it burns coming on the outlet. On the back side, we have a fan, and so as it's blowing the air, the fuel cools the chamber and then burns either internally or just right at the right zone to have a long flame. Or you can use the second solenoid to go through the combustion chamber and fire in the close flame that is a much higher temperature. For more videos of this awesome flamethrowing robot, please check the NHRL YouTube page which hosts all of his fights, as well as an excellent YouTube short, diving into the weapon system in much more detail. Link will be in the description. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this incredible list Andy put together of the little robots that need big bad versions for the battle box. Uh, come back next week, I'm going to be going over how you do detailed drafting work as we design the new version of Scorpios. See you then. Do you guys ever want to know how you start the Zack? Boop!
is why the CAD never gets done. You're just doing this all the time. Me? Me? 